Good day, everybody. Welcome back to CSS3 in 30 days. Today is day number 28, and instead of coding in this lesson, we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about optimizing your CSS3. Good clean code is always a great idea. Here are some hot tips on optimizing your CSS3. First of all, code better. You got to do the work right the first time. Don't rely on optimization tools to make you a good CSS3 coder. As I always like to say, crap in, crap out. That simply means if you are putting something terrible into the machine, something terrible will come out, no matter how much you prettify or optimize or compress the darned thing. If you're doing a bad job in, it's going to be a bad job coming out. So remember, crap in, crap out. When coding your CSS, use shallow selectors instead of really long and messy redundant selectors. And that simply means if you can select simply the ID of awesome, don't select div, paragraph tag, span, m, ID of awesome. Just simply using the ID of awesome is good enough. That in and of itself is smart CSS3 coding. Utilize good code organization. So instead of when you have an idea for a style, just throwing it at the bottom of your CSS style sheet, find out where a good place for that piece of code is. And a nice little tip is put a table of contents in a comment up at the very top of your style sheet. If you have a really big and heavy CSS style sheet, have some organization and have a way that you in the future can revisit your code or if you're handing off the project to somebody else, they can see what the heck you were doing. Use shorthand where possible. So instead of margin top, 20 pixels, margin right, 20 pixels, margin bottom, 20 pixels, margin left, 20 pixels, just say margin, 20 pixels. And treat your CSS3 like it is art. It's not just letters in a code editor, it's your art, it's your craft, it's what makes the web run, or at least it, it's what makes the web look good. So treat it like it is art, because arguably it is. Hot tip number two, validate your code. Sometimes the smallest error in your code can cause the biggest headache. So be smart and use one of those free and awesome tools out there like this one. It's just cssportal.com slash CSS dash optimize. All you got to do is Google CSS optimizer or optimize your CSS. There's a lot of tools out there. This is one that I found and I'll just show you real quick how it works. So I have some CSS here queued up. I'm just going to hit paste. Relatively short CSS file, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to optimize it by compressing it and choosing different settings here in the tool. So standard, let's see, let's make it Let's start here, highest no read readability, smallest size. If you have a production ready style sheet that you wanna have ready to go, then you can have it at its highest compression because you don't need to be able to read it and modify it. That's for developers only. When you wanna be able to see all your code easily, see the organization, the table of contents, the comments, everything like that. Production ready live sites, you don't really need to have it be that readable. So I'm going to say highest, this option preserves CSS. You can save the comments, hacks, and so on and so forth. By default, they have it turned off. I would keep it off for now if you're having it be highly compressed. You can sort the selectors. This says use this with caution. It may change the behavior of your CSS code because it's not a perfect tool. Sorting properties. You can even sort the properties by, uh, I don't know what method they're sorting them, but you can test it out and see what it does, or you can leave it off. You can also regroup selectors, optimize shorthands, all of these sorts of things are things that you can do better by coding better in the first place. So my first tip was code better. That saves you from having to sort your selectors and sort your properties. Just code properly so that you're not putting crap into the machine so it's going to spit crap out. That's why it has cautions. Optimize shorthands. You can do safe optimizations or all optimizations. Some shorthands may be a little bit buggy, so that's why you can use safe optimizations. Compress colors. Uh, if you're using the the color pound three 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 three, you could simply say pound three three three, and that's what this is going to do. Compressing font weights that will help you save some keystrokes or at least some uh, kilobytes in your CSS file. Lowercase selectors. This says it's lowercasing the element names for HTML, XHTML, but nobody cares about X, XHTML anymore, so don't worry about that. And any other elements here, like remove unnecessary backslashes or remove the last semicolon. Little tip is in your code, you don't actually have to have 
a semicolon on your last style. So for example here, in this entire selector final shadow typo right here, this one doesn't actually need a semicolon, but I always do it by default because I don't want to get into the habit when I'm writing vanilla CSS to forget the, the semicolon, but in your production ready site and you're compressing your code, you can have at it. You can discard invalid properties and add a timestamp for when it was optimized, up to you. Process that CSS, lets you know what went, what went on. So it's saying uh, if you're, because I'm using CSS3, it's not, it doesn't know what's going on. So what I can do down here, if I didn't want invalid properties, I can discard them, but I actually want them because I'm using CSS3. So here is the output right here. This is one line, so I'm gonna copy that and show you what that looks like. So this is the, the, the original file, and this is what it would look like compressed. That's it. Crazy. It almost seems too short, but that's, that's what it is. So right here I have about 39 lines of CSS. Right here I've got technically one line. It's just one really long line. So, and that's all the browser will load. So that's both validating and compressing. It's letting you know any sort of messages here that you might need to know. So that is a neat little tool. The other thing which we just did was compress your CSS. So when you're developing, you want that CSS to be highly readable and easy to navigate with your comments, the spacing, the organization, your table of contents, the hacks and everything like that, instructions for developers or co-developers. But in, like I said, those production ready sites, like a live client site or a live applic web application, you don't need all of that stuff because Who's going to be reading that? Other developers who click developer inspect tools and read your CSS, that's really it. So in those live sites, you don't need all of the, all the organization, all of the comments and everything like that. So what you can do, a little tip, is have a developer uh, CSS file that is your, let's call it app.css. And then you have a folder called production, and then in there you have another app.css. The production app.css is the file that you would use to load that uh, when you're doing the live site. But when you're developing on the server, you just simply use your developer version. Now, to show you how you can kind of do that, let's, uh, let's do an example here. So CodeKit is one of my favorite developer tools. CodeKit is a paid application. There's a free trial. Uh, it's codekitapp.com. I highly suggest you support this guy. It's just a single dude. I don't know if he's single or not. He is just a developer who builds an awesome tool called CodeKit. I truly love it. It's only like 30 bucks. You can actually pay what you want anywhere between, you know, 25 and 35 bucks or whatever it is. Um, so I would recommend supporting him, codekitapp.com. Basically, this is like an all-in-one compression output developer tool. You can, you can do a ton with it, but in a very basic way, you can optimize your CSS and even compress images and do everything like that and have it automatically output into a folder that you want. So for example, I have a folder here called theme styles uh, and then a couple CSS files here. I can actually say output style compressed. I can choose how I want it to be compressed and uh, I can change the path. So let me say, I'm gonna create a new folder called production like we just talked about and it's going to say theme in production.css. You can call it whatever you want, but I'm gonna say this, it's gonna take that file and it's going to you know, turn it into something uh, when I hit process. Boom, it's gonna do that, it compiled. So in here, now we have a production file called theme min production CSS, let's check it out. So it's got all of the CSS that was in the original theme CSS, so all of this is now compressed, but I'm not overwriting this. It's just got another file. Now the magic of this is I can have it run automatically when this file changes or builds. So it's checking this file when it changes re-output. So as a little example, if I just delete everything and just say body, font size, 12 pixels and leave it at that and save, it's going to re-output. It just processed it and now that file is that. So it automatically happens. So you don't need to resave, copy and paste, take it down, do this, that, and all the other things. Uh, now I'm just gonna change that back because that was a very important file. So I'm gonna go back, hit save. It's gonna compile, bam, everything is back. 
There we go. So I would highly suggest using CodeKit for those production, uh, for de deving and then needing production ready files. You can optimize a, a ton of stuff, uh, but because this is CSS, we're just gonna talk about that. The other thing that you can do is preload your CSS in the browser. So uh, you can improve the performance and the loading time of your styles on your websites by simply adding the following code, link preload, href, and whatever your CSS is as style. So you're basically using the rel attribute to tell the browser to preload this file as a style, and it will just check a little bit earlier and load that style up so there's less waiting time. Other thing you can do is lighten up those frameworks. So Bootstrap and other similar frameworks are notoriously heavy, meaning that there are a lot of files, functions, assets, and code that you simply do not need in the website. Maybe you're just using the framework for like the grid or button styles or base styles. If that's the case for you, then when you download the framework, either remove everything except what you plan on using or just download specific files from the framework that you need load it up into your website, your application, and make that will make the resources quicker to load. Instead of using all of Bootstrap, you can just use this part of Bootstrap that you actually need. One last thing that I wanna leave you with is learn a preprocessor language. Now I do have a course on SAS, you can check that out afterwards, but you need to take advantage of a CSS preprocessor like SAS or less, and they'll not only save you coding time, but they'll give you more flexibility when it comes to styling and you can export highly optimized images and create production ready sites and applications. Uh, but it's a really nice tool to know when coding. I'm here coding vanilla CSS3 and while it's great, I'm spending a lot of time typing things that I don't need to type if I'm using a preprocessor. I won't talk too much about that, but I'd highly suggest checking out my course Learn SAS. So those are my tips for optimizing that CSS. Code better, validate, compress, preload, lighten up those frameworks, learn a preprocessor language, and check out tools like CodeKit, CSS Optimize, and I put a resource in the, in the file in day number 28 called Shorthand Properties, teaches you a little bit about using shorthands and a little bit of, uh, of how to improve your CSS coding. So, thanks for spending a little 15 minutes or so learning a little bit of theory and why you should optimize your CSS. See you tomorrow in day number 29.